Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is July 1st, and right now we're looking at the visible satellite imagery, and you can see not many low clouds as previous days across the area, but there is a little bit of stratus here moving up towards Mount Rainier. We'll take a look at the webcam here in a moment. You can see we've got a weak system trying to slide through British Columbia here, but after that, in the wake of that system, we're going to build a ridge here across a lot of the Gulf of Alaska and western BC and really warm things up, including a thermal trough moving up the coastline. We'll take a look at those details coming up here, and you can see here on the Paradise Mount Rainier webcam, the visitor center, you can see a little bit of that marine layer up there, but very sparse today. And you can see that snowpack's been melting here over the last few days as well. Nice, glorious day out there across the Pacific Northwest. Again, you can see the Washington coastline there looking beautiful as always there, Seabrook Resort. This is looking at the GFS six hour, two meter temperature. We're gonna just jump right into things here because you can see things pretty warm again today. But now let's look at, go ahead and look into tomorrow. Again, another fairly warm day, but nothing too crazy just yet. So here's the July 3rd right now. Looks like some 80s for the Puget Sound, upper 80s for the Willamette Valley here. You can see California baking down there. Eastern Washington starting to warm up. BC warming up as well. Now look at the 4th of July, showing some 90s for the Puget Sound here on the GFS. Mid and upper 90s here possible for some of the Willamette Valley here. Even warmer than Eastern Washington, Oregon, or Idaho at this point. And I'll show you why that is here in a moment and seattle again july 5th another very warm day up towards 100 for portland there and warming up eastern washington as well here we go on in through oh, this is what july 6th here again possibly another 90 degree day for portland and seattle also here goes july 7th you guys get the picture here really warm and look at bc just getting pretty hot here by the time you get towards july 7th also big ridge building over the area and then a little bit of a relax to this thermal trough here, if, if you can even call it that. But you can see eastern Washington really warming up. So that thermal trough is going to include them as well. I mean, look at that's July 8th by this point. And go to July 9th. Still warm across the area here, if you believe the GFS this far out into fantasy land. This is looking at the critical fire weather conditions going on across some of eastern Washington, Oregon, and BC here. You got this... You know, strong wind coming out of the west, gusting 45 miles per hour locally, 40 and very low relative humidity. So have a heads up there for the fire danger. Same thing here from Pendleton, Oregon. And I'll show you why. So let's go ahead and scroll through the afternoon hours and you can see those downsloping dry winds coming off the Cascades. And look at those relative humidity values just plummet as you get towards the afternoon and evening hours. And you go overnight and you bring those values back up and we rinse and repeat and do that again on Sunday afternoon also. So, and, uh, and you guessed it, again on Monday there. So it gets pretty dry over there, especially these downsloping winds. And those gusty winds can help spread that fire activity quite rapidly. So heads up for that. This is looking at the European last night's run. And we put this into motion. And you can see that weak system moving through BC there. And then the wake of that is when we're going to warm up. You can see this ridge really protecting us from any systems after that. So we may stay warm for a prolonged period of time here across Pacific Northwest. Look at this ridge here across the Gulf of Alaska all the way up towards southern Alaska there. This is looking at sea level pressure. So what I'm going to show you here is a feature of the Pacific Northwest heat waves, at least west of the Cascades anyway. Now, as we go on into the 4th of July morning, you can see this thermal trough creeping its way up the Oregon coastline here, high pressure here. That means you're going to start to turn the offshore, the component offshore here, which starts to warm us up here across much of the region. You can, the 4th of July afternoon, look at that thermal trough moving up through western Oregon, Washington. Here's July 5th, kind of creeping up Vancouver Island as well. So we got some warm days ahead of us here, especially as we go towards the 4th of July. Here's July 6th here. You can kind of see this thermal trough centered over the Pacific Northwest. A little bit of an offshore component at times with some of the wind that could really warm us up west of the Cascades. Now here's looking at 925 millibars and you can see those west winds coming there on shore flow. Got that trough kind of moving through British Columbia, although it is pretty weak. Now we go through Saturday afternoon. You see those winds continue. We're going to go Sunday afternoon again. And we go to Monday afternoon. You'll notice that gradient kind of start to switch up here and get squirrely and start to even point offshore across some of western Washington here as we start to put this thermal trough up the coastline on the 4th of July. Do you see that? Look at 4th of July morning time. Kind of a northeast component and a little bit of Fraser outflow even going here in the summertime and some north wind across eastern Washington. 4th of July here, again, with that offshore component. So that's why we're going to warm up here across Pacific Northwest. Classic signature here for heat waves west of the Cascades. This is Seattle-Tacoma, and you can clearly see that heat here coming on the 4th of July and the 5th of July there, and staying pretty warm through the extended forecast as well. And we'll continue to monitor what's going to come after that.
This is Tri-Cities. Check it out. A nice warm 4th of July coming up here, but it's going to get warmer right after, if you believe the GFS here. Maybe a little bit of a cool down, then the bounce back. So it looks like a prolonged period of above average temperatures here for a lot of the region. This is Quileute here. You can kind of see the signature of that thermal trough moving up the coastline here as we go on in through July 5th and 6th coming up. And maybe a bit of a break and maybe even a return of some warmer weather there off in the extended. But that's way off into fantasy land right now. This is the GFS. Look at Portland, July 4th and July 5th. Very warm temperatures here at the surface with prolonged time being above average and here you go look at that july 4th july 5th very warm days coming up here hopefully we can get some wind around to really stir up the atmosphere with all the fireworks that are going to be occurring this is vancouver and that warm signal exists there all the way through july 6th and 7th there as well now this is looking at six hour precipitation type you can see the storm out here just south of the aleutian islands here is kodiak island and this weak system kind of sliding through BC the next couple of days. And once that gets through, we're going to build this ridge up towards southeast Alaska and really turn off the precipitation makers here across Pacific Northwest. It's already been pretty dry for many areas, though, but we're going to remain so through at least early July for most of the region. This is looking at Seattle yesterday, 79, a nice day again, five degrees above average, no precipitation to speak of. And it looks like we ended the month about two tenths of an inch under what we usually get for June. This is looking at the next 15 day precipitation anomaly, clearly a below average signal here for Western BC, across Eastern BC, Cascades as well. And a little bit of thunderstorm activity boosting those numbers across some of Idaho and Montana. This is looking at way out into the extended. This goes through August 14th here, and you can clearly see why North America, or it just shows that North America, the West Coast, is usually one of the driest spots in North America once the monsoon gets going. Like I mentioned, I think it was yesterday, Phoenix tends to be wetter than Seattle during these summer months here. But yeah, you can see that signal showing up, no exception this year. And some of areas of California getting absolutely zero precipitation there in the extended European run. Here's 6 to 10 day temperature probability outlook. The bullseye across Washington there through July 10th. And this is the precipitation outlook here. I don't know about this above average. We'll see what happens here. We might start to kick up some afternoon thunderstorms again. But you can clearly see the suppression of the monsoon season here as we go through July 10th. This is the drought monitor here. I've been mentioning this. You can see some more drought was introduced across southwest Washington. Some of the Oregon coastal range here. So the Cascades are in moderate drought of Washington, Oregon right now. Abnormally dry for the Seattle Metro. This is sea surface temperature anomaly, and I'm just kind of running this through at a day by day period, and kind of some fluctuations will be going on across the equatorial Pacific as we move into fall with La Nina, a distant memory, and we're probably headed towards a strong El Nino coming up here in fall. We'll continue to monitor that. We're already almost to uh, moderate conditions. Uh, this has not been updated yet. It may not actually do it until July 5th here, so we'll just kind of watch and I'll wait to see if that updates, and I won't show it again until it updates after today. But yeah, get out there and enjoy that weather out there. Um, and yeah, we're going to warm up pretty well here by the time we get to 4th of July across the region. Thermal trough, classic heat signature, west of the Cascades coming up, offshore winds. So summer is definitely arriving here in early July across the region. So we'll continue to watch this forecast off through the extended. We'll see how long this heat's going to last, and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.